heart to heart, we're all for love. Let's talk about boundaries, shall we? Boundaries. Isn't that a fun word? Boundaries. Now, boundaries sometimes become what the ego likes to think of that as its most preferred form of karate. It likes to believe that boundaries means that the minute I don't like something or the minute something rubs me the wrong way, I have the right to do my spiritual karate and put up boundaries. Now, if that's the way you employ boundaries, and I respect each and every one, every person's right to interpret what boundaries mean. First of all, if you have people in your life that you have to constantly put karate boundaries up against, that we need to have a deeper conversation either with people in our lives or consider the environments we're creating around us. But let's talk about what boundaries actually are. What is the true purpose of a boundary? And I think it might surprise you if we really take it from a heart-centered level. If we take boundaries out of this is what gives the ego some belief it has some degree of control. And it doesn't mean you have to put yourself in situations where people disrespect or harm you or manipulate you. But what a boundary actually is, is a boundary is a way for you to maintain alignment with your highest truth and integrity with your energy. And that's the most important thing I want us to focus on. Integrity with our energy. What does that mean? Integrity with our energy is like a bank account. And as adults, we don't write checks bigger than the amount in our banks because then it bounces a check, we get a late fee, and then we're starting to find ourselves imbalanced in the red. And energetically, we do the same thing. We're in the name of being validated by people, in the name of trying to receive the approval we often don't give ourselves. We often overextend ourselves energetically. We overcommit ourselves. We say yes to things that we haven't tuned in to see if we have the bandwidth or energy to handle. Maybe we overcommit ourselves because we're afraid of being rejected. Maybe we overcommit ourselves because we're afraid of being seen in the eyes of someone else as less than spectacular, whole, and incredible. Maybe we say yes to things that overextend ourselves because we're afraid of being rejected by people. And maybe we're not surrounding ourselves with the highest quality of relationships, but maybe there's a part of our ego that says, at least I'm not alone. So whatever the reason is that we overextend ourselves, we say yes before tuning in to see whether we have the bandwidth. Having integrity with your energy is saying, do I have the energy in my emotional and energetic bank account to write the check of this commitment with this person? And if not, a boundary is a way of saying, I'd love to make that purchase. I'd love to write a check and help you with what you're asking for. But there's not enough in my emotional or energetic bank account to clear that check. And the same goes with boundaries when you're hanging out with whether it's an ex-partner, maybe you're co-parenting with someone you're no longer in relationship with, and there might be some edges based on how the relationship ended. Maybe it's when you go see your family for certain holidays and certain dynamics come out or you find yourself being age regressed in the presence of family members who only know how to see you as who you were when they first met you. Boundaries is a way of saying, I agree to spend time with people for as long as I can maintain the integrity of my highest moral ethical value. And if the differences between me and other people become so jagged, create such friction that I notice myself regularly lowering the standard of my ethics, and instead of speaking from my deepest spiritual intention, I'm speaking from a history of pain. I'm speaking from passive aggressive standpoints. I'm speaking from mean spiritedness, judgmental perspectives. Maybe I'm feeling judged by someone and I reflect back a judgment. When our conduct and behavior around other people has caused us to lower the value of our morality, that's the moment that we say, I'm sorry. I think it's time for me to go. It's been a pleasure, or it's been real, and I'll see you later. In the same way that if you were a, a parent to a newborn child, and you brought that newborn child to a family picnic, 
and for the life of you, nothing you did could console the child from its crying fits. It's very common at events for parents of a newborn to say, oh my God, we plan to be here for two hours. Our baby is just not having it. We have to leave. It's only been 10 minutes. I'm so sorry. And everyone understands because it's a newborn. But what happens when that newborn is in your heart and you actually treat your inner child as if it's an actual child you are carrying? And you say to someone, I plan to be here most of the day and I'm just not able to be here. My inner child is having a process and I need to go hold space for that. I'm so sorry. That's a boundary. And what do we notice is the common, common theme in what I'm saying. Boundaries are for us. They're not against other people. Boundaries is not when you say you don't have the right to treat me that way. That's called speaking up for yourself. That's called advocating for yourself. Boundaries are what do I and don't I have the energy to commit to and give? And if I notice that I'm in an environment that is constantly bringing out the least redeemable characters within me, I either stay in the fire and try to figure it out and fan the flames, or I tune in and I say, what do I need the most? I need self-care right now. Because the only reason why any person acts lower than the standard of their highest conduct is because their basic needs are not being met. And in our society, people put their basic needs aside in the name of maintaining a commitment to a social function. But social functions are what we agree to when we're in a space of wholeness. And if the world was run like a giant village and there was a function and we found out Matt Kahn can't come to this function all of a sudden because he's not feeling well, then the village would come together and do we need to bring Matt Kahn dinner? Do we need to give him, does he have enough drinking water? Is he taking care of himself? From a village perspective, not being able to stay at a function means that person needs care while going through some sort of physical, emotional, or energetic process. So we have to live as the leaders of our own village. And we have to know that when I'm in a space of wholeness, I can connect and communicate in whatever way matches the bandwidth and energy and capacity I have in my emotional or energetic bank account. And I can be around family of differing opinions, but if my ethical value starts to lower, if I start getting so triggered that I'm acting in a way I'm going to regret or is going to cause me to feel as if I'm less than the love that I intend to be, Don't I have the right to remove myself from this environment and give myself the care that I so deeply deserve and desire? So boundaries are not against other people. Boundaries are for us. And the deepest purpose of boundary is to actually get you into a solid relationship with truth and authenticity. And the reason why a lot of people are not in the highest relationship with truth and authenticity is because their ego doesn't want to be so honest that it causes them to be seen as less than who they are. There could be judgments. Like if I told someone, I just don't have the capacity to do that for you. Does that cause me to believe that I'm a bad person? Is it self-judgment that you're trying to hide from by trying to present yourself as more than you are? Do you think other people are going to reject you and say, I needed this person right now and they can't be there for me. They're useless. Get them out of my life. And you're going to feel like something that's been sent to the recycling bin only to confirm how low you secretly feel about yourself. Because here's the God's honest truth about boundaries. And I'll tell you this because I employed every one of the things I'm teaching you and I did it as an ongoing study course to develop all the teachings that are now in this book, All for Love, The Transformative Power of Holding Space. And let me just say this. In this book, I teach you what a boundary is, how to employ it, how to communicate it, what the words are you can use to be in the highest level of integrity so boundaries are for you, not against someone. I also teach you in the book, how do you employ boundaries? What are the sentences you can say to express it in the most 
respectful way. And what do you do step by step when someone interprets your boundaries as a form of rejection, interprets your boundaries as they are being sent to the penalty box? Or how do you deal with the projection of other people's anger, ghosting, rejection, and abandonment when you're just being authentically you and it doesn't quite work for the desires of someone's ego? And how do you deal with that? Step by step in this book. So let's talk about honesty and boundaries. Because this is the breakthrough I had many years ago about this with my family. There would be times where I'd be invited to do something and I either didn't have the room in my schedule, legitimately, and there were times where, and so I would say, I'm so sorry I can't be at this event. My schedule is made a year in advance. I'm so sorry. And then there would be other times where I actually had the space and I didn't feel the resonance to go. And I had to say to my family, who I love dearly, thank you for the invitation. I'm not feeling like I have the energy or the bandwidth to attend, but I'm sending you all my love. And I've even had people in my family say, that makes us feel rejected. And to which I say, I love you with all my heart. I'm simply doing what is honoring my needs. And I know that you and I will see each other when I'm feeling up to it. Now, some people would hear those words and goes, I don't like to frame myself or see myself as someone who's less than or weak. That's the ego having a very subtle ego trip. Because the truth is, sometimes we're at our best. Equally, sometimes we're in process and not at our best. Are you afraid that if you say you're not at your best, that you're going to manifest more of the same? That's superstition. That's not how the universe works. The universe is putting you in the exact situations as the exact versions of yourself, begging you to be honest about where you're at right now. This doesn't have to be the extent of your highest mastery. This doesn't have to be the extent of your greatest contribution to the planet. But there's nothing wrong with saying, here's where I'm at right now. Here's what I do and don't have to give. And to put myself in a situation where I'm trying to give more than I have is going to bring up resentment, lower the standard of my conduct, and actually create a greater wedge of discord between us than if I was just honest if I was just authentic and I chose self-care over what I don't have to give. Feel this. Feel this. And if you can type into the comments, what is what I'm saying? How is it touching you? Let us have a revolutionary conversation about boundaries. And I'm sending all my love to all of you. If we make improvements slowly, it has to do with mental health. You know, it can, it can. I think what this really has to do with is communication. And communication is how we as the universe measure our relationship with the integrity of authenticity. Are you willing to be honest about your experience with people you communicate with, even if it makes you feel as if you're less than the highest potential that you are stepping into? Because I've talked about how in relationships, we often get into the wrong relationships. And I know people say, well, there's no wrong relationship because we're always learning. Yes, that's true on a very quantum level. We can't make a wrong choice for the right thing we're ready to learn. But when we partner up with people and we're more in relationship with their potential than their reality, it, sends, it tends to put us in an imbalanced place where we're afraid to speak our truth or we're constantly getting reflections of discord when we do what's best for us that doesn't match someone else's desires for us. But what's interesting is that more egregiously than we get into relationship with other people's potential, we're actually lost in the potential of who we're going to become. And strangely, we're more afraid of presenting who we are right now as a work in progress of the work of art we already are on a quantum level. But see, isn't that what the universe is begging you to do? To say, if you can know the potential you are, 
If you can know the potential you're becoming and on a quantum level, the potential you already have realized yourself to be. The highest power in the universe demonstrates its power by being boldly honest about where it is in its journey of evolution. It's kind of like you're the main character in a movie. The end of the movie has already been filmed. The main character has already experienced its hero's redemption. But we're at like the first act of the movie that's already been filmed. So we have to stay in character to where we're at while knowing where we're going and what's already been filmed. And if you can start connecting with the universe and connecting in greater heart coherence, which again, every page of this book is pure heart coherence, 10 chapters, all the attributes of the embodiment of our soul and our thoughts and our words and our actions. If you can start tapping into who you are at a quantum level, you will actually have the power to boldly say what you can and cannot do without feeling as if it makes you less than, without taking on the pain of other people as if you're disappointing people, and without internalizing a low self-esteem or any degree of worthiness because at a certain place, honesty is relieving. Honesty sets us free. And we're still living in a society where taking care of our needs over spending social time with other people makes other people feel like if I was more important or valued, they'd prioritize me over themselves. And as I say that and we hear it, we say, that sounds crazy. But that's still the world we live in. But that's not the world you live in as an individual. You live in a world called all for love. You live in a world where boundaries are an act of self-love. Boundaries are for you, not against anyone else. Because you don't need to be against anyone. You just need to be for you. And if spending less time with someone and more time with yourself makes you more for you than against you, then that's the reason and that's the place from which you communicate from. And if there's any person in your life that hears what's good for you and feels put off, displaced, or inconvenienced, that's someone, that is someone who's only interested in how you can fulfill their desires above and beyond cheering on and supporting what is good for you. And it's good to know that because the people that are more interested in what you can do for them than equally supporting what they can do for you aren't people you need to have in your closest, most intimate inner circle. So we bless and thank people who act this way to show us where they deserve to be in the priority of our social circles. And we constantly take the time to teach other people how we want to be treated. We teach other people how much better they can treat themselves by the respect and honor we have for ourselves, for our needs, and how we learn to communicate those needs authentically. Because the more honest you can become, the less angry you have to be. And the more honest you can be, the more peacefully you can convey it, the more other people have the right to their own experience without you taking on their experience as if it's something you've done wrong. Feel this. Feel this. Try this out loud with me. In the name of boundaries, as an act of self-love, today I put my priorities first. In the name of boundaries, as an act of self-love, Today, I put my priorities first. And of course, if you are a parent, you have to learn how to fulfill your needs while fulfilling the needs of young, impressionable minds. So as parents, of course, it's a little bit of a maze. It's a little bit of a magic carpet ride. And my heart goes out to every single heart, whether you're a parent, a 
corporate executive, an art, an artist, a, a, a light worker, all these things as one <laughs> corporate executive by day, parent by night, light worker on the weekend, a student, a spiritual aspirant, one who has decided to go all the way and fully wake up this lifetime, an anchor of light, a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker. My heart is with every single human being right now, and it is my intention to boldly awaken the inner healer in every heart and to teach every human being how to trust their heart, to communicate, to respond from the love that we are so that we never mistake any degree of human interaction as anything but an opportunity to anchor the light of love in the most authentic way not in a way where we're blinded by positive thinking or bright siding or bypassing, not choosing the light to avoid the darkness, not hiding in love out of an avoidance of fear, but bringing love into every interaction, knowing the discomfort of interaction is not because you're afraid to be honest. The discomfort of interaction is a moment when you are afraid to trust love fully. And in the name of trusting love fully, please repeat after me. I allow any barriers, any blockages, any overlays, any distortions, judgments, traumas, or neglects, cellular memories, familial influences, ancestral wounds, and patterns of heredity. Causing me to distrust love, avoid honest communication. and believing honest conversation leads to complication and confrontation. All cleared out of my energy field once and for all. Return to the source of its origin. Transmuted completely. And healed to completion now. As of this moment, I surrender all of my trust and faith into love to be the interpreter of my thoughts and perceptions, the speaker of my words and responses, the creator of my choices and actions. knowing that when aligned in love, I am always one with truth. A truth that is always honest about how I feel. What I do and don't have the bandwidth to give. and is a truth that is always about my needs never needing to go to battle especially when others confuse truth with opinion And so I give other people the right to feel and see however they do. To see me however they see me. Knowing my focus is on advocating for my innocence. Checking into my emotional and energetic bank account. 
and making sure I'm not writing checks that my energy field can't cash. And whenever, whenever I feel overextended to the degree that it's lowering the standard of my conduct, I employ a boundary, not as a punishment to others, but as a gift of clarity, renewal space, self-love and self-care for myself. All my love to you. Namaste.